All right, welcome to Gospel Jazz Improvisation. Improvisation is what everyone wants to learn to do, right? So everyone wants to learn how to solo and do fills and runs that sound cool. The cool part about um, improvisation is that it's actually pretty simple once you learn the tricks. Um, it's not easy, but it's simple. I'll say it like that. This course is going to teach you um, some you know, magic skills and tricks that will teach you to improv. And there, there really are some that we can use. There's little tricks and little skills that we can use that even if you don't really have an ear for music, I mean, you could really actually take them and, and, and people, you know, they won't know the difference between, um, you know, somebody that, that doesn't know how to play by ear and somebody that does. You know, you can just take these scales and kind of just solo with them, so. All right, so uh, first of all, let me say, let me put this uh, little, you know, introduction in here. So improvisation is scenario specific. You're probably not gonna use the same filler run in church on Sunday morning that you would use while you're jamming with your friends. Now you you might, you might, you might, but you might not. Probably won't. Not that it's a bad or even, you know, what the worldly feel or run, but improvisation has to be done tastefully. It has to be done in the right spot. So if our playing is too full of fills and runs uh, to the point that it's distracting to the people that are listening and it's not taking them to that place of worship with God and praise, we may have to take a step back and reevaluate how we're playing and maybe just calm down with the fills and runs a little bit because Remember, our playing, number one, is to worship God, to give Him the glory that He deserves, and not to bring ourselves glory. So with this little introduction, uh, now that we've got that out of the way, just wanted to say that, get that off my chest, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the number one most important thing about improvisation, the number one thing you have to know, the very first thing you got to know is the major scale. So if we can't solo with the major scale, then we don't really know how to solo, because if we don't know the major skill, you can't really start learning the other skills because they're derived from the major skill. So soloing is basically all about taking notes and making rhythmic and melodic phrases out of those notes. And um, it really depends on what chord we are, we are on. And therefore, we also have to know what scale to use. And to know that, we have to know what key we're playing in because it's all relative. It all depends. You know, if you're on the sixth chord or if you're on an A minor, you know, you have no idea what, what uh, scale you're going to play. I mean, let's say you're in the key of F, you're going to have a B flat on your scale. If you're in the key of C, you're not going to have that. Whereas if you're in the key of G, you're going to have an F sharp in your scale. So it all depends on what key you're in, where it, what, what, what notes you're going to use for your major scale. Now you can figure that out by ear, but or you could also just have the knowledge ahead of time so you didn't hit the wrong note. So, um, we have to know our major skills because um, we have to match that skill to what chord we're on. And we also, um, we're going to be using the major skill or a mode de derived from it. We'll go over what modes are later um, to play the right notes with the right chords. So, let's make sure we know our major skills and we're going to help you with that. So, um, if you're like most people, you probably know the notes in the major skill, but you probably can't use the skill in a rapid ascending or descending uh, run, you know. That's more classical stuff right there, but um, basically what we need to do is we have to learn, and we need to learn first of all, the major skill. And any skill you learn that you're going to use, you need to learn it over two octaves going up or down. Because if you only know how to do it over one, over one octave, you're not really going to be able to truly use it uh, for doing solos and stuff. Alright, so um, what we're going to teach you to do is how to play the major scales over two octaves. And we're also going to teach you how to play a major ninth chord in your left hand so that you get a little bit of a, of a cool sound and you can kind of base your little fill off of that. And we're going to go through the circle of fourths and do it. Uh, so we'll explain all that here in just a second in the PDF study guide. Um, but yeah, that's really the easiest, best way to start off, major skill. I know it sounds maybe a little quaint, a little boring, but if you don't know the major skill, the pentatonic skill, you're not going to be able to figure that out, and you're not going to be able to figure out all the minor blues and, and, and the different types of skills that we're going to be going over. So um, what we're going to do first of all is we have on our PDF study guide that come with, comes with this lesson that's provided for you. You have the each major scale with a different fingering uh, in, written down for you. Now the fingering is really easy. On most of the scales it's just 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
I think like seven of the skills use that fingering. Six or seven. So that makes it really easy for you. So we're going to start off with C. And basically we're going to do C, D. There's no flats or sharps in C. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Same thing, go back down, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, okay? Just nice and evenly paced. Um, you can kind of bring your thumb under if you want to. Or you can just pick up your whole hand. It's really just totally up to you. Now I'm using a keyboard that's not full weight action keys. And I tend to notice that I do tend to hit more wrong notes. So don't judge me as a bad piano player if I'm if I hit some wrong notes when I'm not using a full weight action keyboard. Uh, that's just, I'm just going to throw that in there. Alright, um, F major scale is, is a little different. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then backwards the same thing, 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1. B flat is going to start off on the two. And when we're using scales that have flats and black notes in them, we don't use we don't want to use our thumb on the black note. We almost never want to do that. We we want to keep it on the white notes. Okay, so we're going to start off on the two, and then one two three one two three four one two three one two three four four three two one three two one four three two one three two one two. So you want to kind of try to recognize the pattern. Uh, you notice here after you, after the first initial two of your of your fingering. Um, by the way, thumbs one, two, three, four, five. Um, it's easy. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Think of it in, in blocks. You know, you've got C, D, and E flat. That's one, two, three. And then you've got F, G, A, and B flat. That's four. Okay, so one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And same thing going down. Four, three, four, three. And then back on your two. Okay, that's an easy way. That's how I think of it, and it really helps me. Hopefully, it'll help you. Um, e flat is kind of the same thing. So E flat, your flat notes are E flat, A flat, and B flat, as you can see on the PDF study guide. So you're going to start off on the two, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Back down is the same. Three, four, three, four, and on your two. A flat's going to be about the same. You've got four flats: A flat, B flat, D flat, E flat. All right, and once again, if you need to pause the video, and I'm sure it's going to take some time to learn these if you don't know them already. Okay, A flat, start on your two, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, three, two, one, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two. All right, and D flat, same thing, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two. Just think about it in blocks. That's all you got to do. Think about it in blocks. Four, three, four. Get your last two. Okay. Um, G flat. B. And here's where it starts getting easy. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Just like C. E's the same fingering. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Same thing back going down. A's the same. So those are all the major skills. Um, practice getting those over each key um, in your right hand. And if you want something a little more advanced, if you already know this, what you could do is in your left hand hit the root note first. And I go over this a little bit in the uh, in the PDF study guide. But basically, what you're going to do is you're going to You're going to basically hit a C major 9, and you're, you're going to hit the bass note, C major 9, and then you can actually hit um, the bass note, C major 9 again, so. And I tend to do it a little easier, I actually do it. E flat, 
and then you just go on through the circle of fourths. Um, just follow the same order as the lead, as the cheat sheet for major chords is in. All right, but that's basically um, just the general idea as far as getting the ascending and descending fills and all that stuff. So there's a bunch of different fills we can actually do with the major scale. Let's get into that a little bit. All right, so first one is just a real simple. Walking up, it all depends on where you're walking up to. So if you're playing a song, um, let's see. What we're basically doing here, C major 9, F major 9, C major 9, F major 9. Okay, E, G, B, D, C major 9, E, G, A, C, F major 9. So. How simple that is. You're basically just using those first five notes right there, and you're kind of just playing around with them, you know. So that's a little simple thing you can do. Um, another thing you can do, let's see, um, same thing, you know, on the F chord. It all depends on where you're walking up to. Um, doing right there because basically the, the easiest way to learn a solo you take a certain amount of notes let's say you take C D and E and you just solo just with those three notes and you'd be amazed at how much stuff you can come up with just off three notes So, and then you take maybe maybe these five notes, just like I did a second ago, or these five notes, and you just use those to solo, and you create and you just jam out for a little bit, and you create all these little sounds, and then you kind of start putting them together, and all before you know it, you're you're improving, and it's easy, and you're just using the notes in the major scale. All right. So first first set C D E F G. Next set G A B C D. Uh, you could also use A B C. Maybe A, B, C, D, and E. So there's another set of chords, notes you can use there, A, B, C, D, E. All right, let's look at D maybe, D, E, F, um, and then G, A. All right, 
right? And, you know, we're, we're not really changing our chords here, I mean... So there's a lot of stuff you could do. Um, of course, hopefully you've gone over our, uh, our AP701 you know, jazz chords courses, so it'll help you out with uh, knowing the chords you can use and different stuff. But basically, keep it simple. Um, you know, major sevenths, you can use whatever you wanted to over here. All right, so that's kind of just how soloing works. I mean, you're just taking the major scale, you're playing chords. I mean, if you're playing a song, which we'll go over in a second, there's, there's a lot of stuff you could do. Uh, a few other little tricks, uh, tips and tricks here you can use without getting into any kind of blues notes or any kind of altered scales or modes or anything, um, or pentatonics or whatever, just using the major scale. Uh, you can use ascending and descending alternating notes. You're just taking the major scale. And you're kind of just alternating the notes, like C, A, B, G, A, F, G, E, F, D, E, C, okay? Same thing going up. see what we're doing there it just adds some kind of suspense and stuff even though it's really simple I mean if you do it by itself it sounds boring when you start adding it in and kind of getting with you know adding some rhythm in, rhythm to it too you can alternate different types of notes you know uh, what I was doing there is actually alternating fourths the notes are four notes apart it's a good exercise to do just going up because you never know when you'll use them you can alternate using the thirds um, alternate using sixth alternate using uh, even fifths maybe um, so those are really some kind of just some neat exercises you can do and practice things you can do. And once again, you know, try these in different keys, you know. Um, so. Hopefully that just feeds you some ideas, I mean, and kind of inspires you because we're really just doing this with the uh, major scale. And if you can do this just with the major scale, I mean, imagine imagine what you could do uh, when we start getting into the pentatonics and the minor blues and the mixolydians and the, all the different scales and stuff that are out there. So the ultra blues, 
Um, you know, there's all kinds of different skills. Um, so practice these, practice these concepts in every key. Although if you get them in one key, you should have them in all the others. Especially with you're practicing the major skills, I really recommend if you don't know the major skills really well, practice the ascending and descending skills that we gave you to practice um, every day, a couple of times. You'll have them down in a in a week or two, no time at all. All right, use the exercise songs. You can kind of use those as little practice things to kind of solo and practice your soloing. Uh, you could do little songs, you know, falling in love with Jesus. Um, just songs maybe that stay in the major scale. Because here's the key. No matter what key you're in, um, if you're in the key of F, that F major scale is going to work almost over every single chord, as long as it's a chord naturally found in the major in the major scale of that key. So if you obviously have a note outside of the major scale, like you're in the key of F here, falling in love with Jesus, and you've got an E flat note. So just alter your scale a little bit until we get into how you, how those work. Get into just altering, just alter your scale instead of an E, play an E flat, because that's the altered note, right? You change an E to an E flat. And you can use the same major scale, which is actually a B flat major scale if you look at it. And you can use the same concepts. So, um, anointing. scale in there it's really just one of those things where you kind of start hearing it and it kind of just starts coming to you and also you hear other musicians do it and um, you'll start hearing it I remember one of the first ones I learned was tricks I've learned and I've had people teachers teach me this before is whatever note you're exiting that you start on try to end on that note so if you're doing a little solo you notice I start on an A flat there right kind of try to keep the same theme throughout your solo and kind of go back to that same note and use it as a point of reference so anyways that's probably a lot for lesson one, but hopefully it's been a blessing to you. Uh, we've got 11 more great lessons that we're planning to do in this series. So um, really excited about it and look forward to uh, teaching you in lesson two. God bless.